So uh, Beautiful Creatures is actually a film directed by Richard Legravenez. It's being produced by Elcon Entertainment and released by Warner Brothers. Uh, this film is due out in 2013, February 2013, and uh, it's really exciting to be able to come here and show everyone uh, some development that we've been doing with the Foundry for this film and possibly other films down the road. And so the whole goal was, how can we recreate these environments? How can we uh, integrate all the CG as fast as possible without having artist time spent um, trying to move lights around? You know, it's like, let's just recreate the environment. Let, let's, let's photograph everything super high res. Let's then place everything all over the environment. But like, how do you do that without actually taking photographs all over the place, right? And so, you know, the answer is spherical HDRs because you can take um, 11K HDR with a Nikon um, and some other equipment pretty quickly and actually just texture map it uh, inside of Mari. And uh, I'm going to show you some of that, but first let me just go over some of the tools uh, to get there before we, we hop into Mari. So the, uh, the Nikon D800 is a camera I used, and what's really cool about the uh, D800, it's a 36 megapixel camera. So for a medium format uh, camera, that's actually really, really good. But the problem is, is when you're shooting higher resolutions, the lenses that you'd use to shoot HDRs prior, like a Sigma 8mm, which is pretty much like the main uh, lens for shooting HDRs, you see a lot of artifacting for that camera. So what we did is we went out and got a, uh, a Nikkor 105 millimeter. I had to send it over to Germany, and there's a guy in Germany that actually would shave the hood of the lens so I can shoot the uh, HDR photos. Uh, next was the Promote. Um, this is probably the best remote for shooting HDRs, period. You hook up a shutter cable to your camera and the Promote along with the USB, and you can trigger the exposures extremely quickly. The, the last piece of gear, the Atom E360 head, was, was actually the best, um, the best head I've tried. If you have a Nodal Ninja, uh, any other type of like Manfrotto 360 head, those are really great for panoramics, but if you want to go in there on set really quickly and grab photos in like record times, that is the head because it has a, a quick release grasp um, piece. You can just grab the, the lens off the camera and then put another lens on and just go and start shooting. So it's uh, really cool. Now the, the last piece of hardware we'll get to in a moment, but I'm just going to show you an example. So there was uh, five exposures, about four directions. There were three EV apart. Our quickest exposure was one eight thousandth of a second, and the slowest was half a second. Uh, you know, it'd start off with either f11. If it was too dark, I'd go probably to like five six for my f-stop. Um, one spherical HDR with this setup is about twenty seconds and gives you a eleven k HDR. So within twenty seconds, that, that's a lot of information. I mean, this is a whole sphere of the environment that we're taking in twenty seconds. So what that will allow you to do is basically grab the whole environment really, really quickly. This image is a little more sharp on this display than this um, projector. Um, but so this is 11K zoomed out. And now we'll just kind of like go into it. So you can see this would be like the one-to-one -one of the 11K image. Now the, uh, the next part is the Faro scanner. So this is a small portable LiDAR device that shoots um, a laser, basically, 360, 150 meters uh, for range. It also does uh, full color. So you can have a, a big point cloud of your sets, of your environments. You can scan cars with it, trees, your lunch, um, pretty much anything you want. And it's small. So you can carry the uh, Nikon camera with a tripod in one hand and then have your 3D scanner in the other. Um, this is also half the price of a, a Leica scanner, which um, other productions might be used to, uh, half the price and a quarter of the size. Uh, so this is the Faro scene software. And when you take the raw scans from the scanner, this is what you bring it into. And the whole point of this is to actually register everything together. So you take multiple scans and you marry them together and you get perfect accuracy lining them all up. The Faro is uh, one of the only scanners that has a, a sphere tracking system. So you can grab a point from any of the spheres and get them completely lined up in space. So this is one of the sets from the film. Um, you know, like I said, we scanned every set because we, you know, we didn't know what we might need later on. Uh, so having the option to rebuild anything from the film in 3D is great. So once I export, uh, 
the actual scan data, I bring it into GeoMagic. And what GeoMagic does is it does a few things. You can modify the point cloud, but you can also reduce it. Um, GeoMagic has a really cool noise function where you can interactively adjust and separate the point clouds, um, remove the noise, and then uh, mesh the geometry. Uh, so it was really great. I tried a, a bunch of programs and found GeoMagic to be the best to actually handle um, these sort of operations, which do not exist that well in other programs. So you can see right here, we're just interactively adjusting and the blue little dots, the, the noise that we want to remove. And so with a click of the button, see most of them are all now gone, so it's cleaned up. And then here we have the meshing of the geometry. So you can take this mesh that's been triangulated and you can bring it inside a Maya, a Max, any program you have and start to use this as your basis for, for building the scan data. Uh, really, really cool. Um, while we were actually uh, trying to figure out how to get the point cloud inside of Maya, there used to be this plugin um, that would let you load point cloud, but they got purchased by Autodesk. And um, when they got purchased, they basically said, sorry, no one else can buy this and uh, they took it off the market. So I'm just like, oh my god, what am I going to do? It would be so awesome to be able to take that point cloud, you know, process it, throw it in Maya, and then you, know, you basically can like, throw 3D characters in, you can do post-vis, you can do pre-vis. And there's a gentleman named um, John Casella from Luma Pictures who was developing this plugin that, that you see based on Disney's uh, Partio IO, and it's uh, the visualizer part of the plugin. And what, John's plugin lets me do is actually take the Faro scene data directly from Faro and load it into Maya. So I'm going to change the, the actual color. So now you see the color points. And I think the most I loaded up was about um, 20 million points inside Maya's viewport, which is even the old viewport. It's not the 2.0 re redone viewport. Um, and it, what's really cool is this is like a visual communication device. You know, you can show somebody something in 3D instantly after you scan it and try to get everything across to them. And also, uh, for modeling reference, here we have um, a work in progress model that was done by uh, Shige Tomo, I think it's Tomo Toshi, um, who helped us out. And he basically used a combination of both the GeoMagic exports along with the point cloud to really refine the geometry to make sure that this point cloud is completely accurate because that's what you want, is you, you want complete accuracy uh, when you're rebuilding the sets. So I'm just going to go around here. So here you can see the, uh, the remeshed uh, point cloud over the original point cloud. So the accuracy is really great between the two. Yeah, so this is pretty much the room that I'm going to show you for demo. So our, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the spherical HDR uh, the 11K, and, and we're going to place it inside of this, inside of Mari, and actually paint the whole environment uh, with photoreal photography. All right, so this is a custom build of Mari. Um, this is put together for our show. Um, I'm not sure when the actual release of this tool will be uh, in a version of Mari, but um, you know, it's kind of cool to be able to show you guys this um, and see what possibly might be around in the future. All right, cool. So here is the room in Mari. And w for preview purposes, the first thing I usually do is actually try to uh, line up the spherical projections. So what I'm going to do is have, I have one geometry for everything. Uh, when I go to bake the projections down into PTEX, I'm going to actually swap the model out for um, models that are cut up in sections to keep the file sizes smaller than having one large uh, 40, 50 gig PTEX file. So if we go over here to shaders, we're going to create a new shader. I'm just going to move this guy down a little bit. We go with new shader module. Down at the bottom, we have something called projection sphere. Now with this projection sphere, we're going to load up the HDR. So I have uh, five positions for this room. Um, I'm going to use up the first one. Let's open it. So this is a 250 meg uh, EXR, and when it's uncompressed, it comes down to about a gig um, into RAM. Um, there's a few little adjustments we're, we're going to be working on to actually have it so I can load up uh, 20 or 30 of these 
and then have them bake down uh, from the 11K. So the first thing you'll notice is that the sphere, the spherical projection is actually projecting from the center of the room. So the first thing you want to do is you want to adjust the offset. So we have a, uh, we can translate it on X. I'm holding control, pressing up or down to do this. If I let down the control button, I can move it really slowly to get like um, some fine detail. Uh, we also have the, the Y positioning, and you can see here I can start pulling it up. And we're going to start placing it uh, inside the room, along with all the rotation. So I can take that spherical HDR and then go back and forth between the wireframe and actually uh, place it on the geometry. So I'm going to move it over here a little bit. So you can see the bed, the blue on the bed is actually starting to line up now. And uh, I do already have the uh, positions lined up, so I'll save it some time and just pull out my, my cheat sheet. All right, great. So now if we turn off the wireframe, um, other than the projections swimming through, you can see here that the whole entire room is, uh, from that one map is, is completely textured. So where the areas you see where the, the projection is kind of going overwards, what we really want to do is we want to actually blend uh, these spherical HDRs from multiple HDRs. So that's where we come down here. There's an option called cold back faces. So any of the back faces here that are not, are facing away from the projection are not going to be affected. Um, there's also the option to actually set a fall off distance. So what we're really actually creating is we're going to create um, a volume. Oops, sorry, this is the wrong one. Oh, no, that should be it. Yeah, here. So here we have like a, basically a, a small little volume of the HDR. And what we can do is we can project this little HDR from here. I can grab one from another location, which is uh, right in this area. And then we can start basically filling up the room really quickly with this high-risk photography. So to be able to actually do this uh, interactively in real, real time inside Amari, um, this is really where the magic happens when it comes to doing this, along with being able to actually paint um, and clone areas or, or warp them together. So this is really, really neat. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another version of that uh, shader, which is called a masked spherical projection. And that will let you basically paint a, a mat to go from one to the other. And we're just going to load that up. All right, so here's uh, a few other HDRs. We're in the corner of the room. And so what you're going to see under our shader is we have uh, two positions. So we have position five and we have position four. Under our channels, we have a position four mat and a position five mat. And so these are going to be solid white. So the whole idea is we grab a, a paint, paintbrush, and you can see, like, for instance, right here, there's supposed to be a, a, a little ball of uh, Christmas ornaments. So this spherical HDR that's placed right here is kind of like projecting through it. So because I have the other um, HDR, which is taken from right about here, I can basically paint a mat and go from one to the other to, like really, really quickly. So you can see here we're getting the actual uh, projection that we want. And we can just paint, uh, paint out the, the chair that was kind of swimming through that area. And so right here on the ground, we can paint out the other pieces of the, uh, the tripod that was showing up. Or if I look over here on the other side, we can grab the uh, a more accurate uh, projection from one of the uh, spherical photos that was actually taken from this area. So really quickly, you can start really piecing together this environment, um, you know, shooting your photography extremely quickly, along with having the scan data, everything working together and, and then coming through inside Amari. Um, it's a really, really quick process. And, and one of the other things you should notice is that when I uh, expose up or down, we have the full floating point range of those HDRs. So this room can be used to actually light your, your, your CG um, to get all your accurate reflections, to turn on GI, um, to basically have the most uh, perfect integration of CG elements that have been rendered out to match plates. Uh, you can use it for a lot of things. One of the things that we're finding out is that the photography is so good that we're able to, instead of having pickup shots for the film, we can take the scan data, process it, and then the uh, director has a lot more creative freedom to actually create uh, the shots that he wasn't able to pick up when we had a product production. So 
what happens with, with that is if they wanted to shoot another angle um, or more coverage, they'd have to actually put the sets up again, hire a whole crew, and then you, you, know, you have to go back and start shooting. So this definitely gives uh, everyone on this production a lot more freedom uh, to, to do what they want creatively. So I'm going to close this out, and uh, I'll show you the work in progress. Now, I, I wouldn't consider this finished piece by all means, but I think it was good enough for a tech demo um, and to actually get the, um, the workflow kind of figured out, because uh, I've never really used a spherical projection inside of a, a paint package and have it uh, actually work. So this is kind of cool to actually be doing this so quickly. You can see here, this is a work in progress of the room. Uh, we have pretty much everything projected all over. And there's a lot of detail. Like, I can fly into this comic book. And with the p you know, you can see that the resolution that you have to play with is really unheard of. And when you, when you mix this with, like, depth of field, um, if we have any objects that are going to be reflective and we want to add some, uh, some moving highlights, we can basically paint that separately. And then in V-Ray, we can add our shaders and physical camera and have something that's like a world that's like, you know, uh, completely accurate in terms of the look and capture of the set. But, you know, there's, it, just, it just picks up so much detail. Um, and one of the other things is there was a few areas where I had to actually use a, a camera system um, where I use non-spherical. And you can always take the non-spherical images just in case you want the extra detail with that. Uh, Fabio Zapata uh, gave me a hand for this demo to uh, uh, basically help me with the camera lineups, which was really fantastic. But you can see out here, you know, we have this background outside that we just placed for some parallax. Um, and that was everything was painted with the full range inside of Mari. So it's, it's actually a really, really cool tool. And, you know, I'm looking forward to showing uh, all of our vendors on the show um, how, to, how to use this technique along with uh, finaling shots for the film um, using some of these, uh, these workflows. So it's pretty cool. And what we'll do is uh, if we go back over to the other monitor, let me show you some test renders. So these are some physical camera renders inside of V-Ray. Not complete at all, um, but uh, you can kind of get a feel of the, uh, of the actual room and see the wireframe on top of it. So all the depth of field and, and paint work. And it's, it's actually kind of cool to uh, be able to do this with Mari. And you, know, you could put the camera at pretty much anywhere you want, um, as long as you have the photography for it. You know, there's really no limitations um, that we've found yet, but uh, it's still a work in progress. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, demo and have a great rest of your time here. Thank you. <laughs>